Hey out there, thanks for tuning in. I know you guys are chomping at the bit for me to get to the third phase out of the five phase plan I put together for real estate. However, I gotta take a little break for a second because one of my friends asked a few questions. All this time I've been saying, subscribe, ask questions, share, and then I have a friend of mine that's a subscriber that asked a question like four days ago and I'm just getting around to answering it. Sorry about that, Drew. So listen, Drew asked a couple questions. Questions from Drew. How does the first time flipper get the startup money? Great question, Drew. Number two, how much money do you need to get started? Another great question. Drew asked quite a few questions the first time he asked. His number three is how to find property, but I'm gonna to get to number three in a minute. So I'm gonna get around to Drew's questions. First, I want to give you a little personal story about how I got funding for my first deal. We're talking back 1997. I was living in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Not that big of a fan of living there. No disrespect to anybody that's there right now. However, every time I went through the desert and I hit it like a sand dune, I thought there was gonna be an ocean or a bay on the other side. Never was. Anyway, let me tell you what happened. So I got a mortgage job. I went for my first loan, my first VA loan, zero money down, the best loan there is out there. When I went to this small mortgage company, I saw that they had an empty desk and I said, you know what, I think I could do this. How about I start doing mortgages? Well, sure enough, I started doing mortgages. About six months, I got the real estate itch. I think I already had the real estate itch, but I was really getting the itch. So I went through this not so nice neighborhood I found a house, $40,000, it was foreclosed on. I reached out to the bank. Now, up until this point, I read a lot of books on how to buy a house with no money down because I didn't have any money to get started. My credit was decent, it wasn't that good, but it was decent. So let me get back to the story. I found a house, $40,000 for this house. Now we're talking 1997, 23 years ago. $40,000 it was foreclosed on. So I was already in the mortgage business. I had a little bit of knowledge as far as financing and, and mortgage companies. I reached out to the mortgage company. I said, hey, I saw your house at ABC Jones Street. I'd like to buy it. What kind of deal can you give me? They said, well, we're not coming down off the price, but if you come up with $5,000, we'll hold the $35,000 note for you. I don't know what the term was. It was probably very unfavorable, <laughs> probably 12 month period, 10% interest. I don't know what it was. The problem was I didn't have the $5,000 to come up with. I found the house, got the deal flowing and didn't have the cash. So I reached out to, at that time, my ex-father-in-law now, reached out to my ex-father-in-law who put together unfavorable terms for the 5,000, but I was able to get into the house. The fix-ups, I needed carpet, paint, roof, all that kind of stuff. I forget what it came up to. It came up to like maybe fifteen, fifteen or eighteen thousand dollars in repairs. Um, I put everything on credit card for the repairs. So I borrowed five thousand from my ex-father-in-law, got the bulk of the financing from the mortgage company, put the fix-ups on a credit card, and then sold it for eighty. I think I made like twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars on that house, and it was amazing. I was cutting countertops at the time for a living and going to school full time um, and doing mortgages on the side. So $25,000, if it was even that much, represented more than a year's salary. That's how I got going. Now, I really don't think you could find those deals anymore as far as going directly to the, to the lender and say, listen, I, I want to take over your property. I don't think they're out there anymore. I don't even know where... I came from as far as to, to reach out to the lender. I don't, I don't, it was so long ago, my memory isn't quite there. I don't know how that all came together, but that was my first deal. Now, this time back around, now this is many years later, so I've been in the flipping business a little while. I got out, I had a hiatus, like a 20-year hiatus, something like that. This time around, I encountered the same problem. Didn't have any cash. My credit was mediocre, but I knew I wanted to buy something. Luckily, I was married to a good woman. Shout out, Diane. So, after years of looking for properties, I finally found one. And the first time I found this property, the way that I came up with the startup money was Diane's credit cards. 
Diane's always done the right thing, has always had great credit, and her credit lines on these credit cards was a decent amount of money. I took out a cash advance. That's how I got my first house this time. Drew's second question about how much money do you need in order to get started, well, that depends. It depends on a bunch of different factors. So I'll get into that at the end, but right now I want to go over different places that you can get money to start up. Like I said, I originally got it from my father-in-law and the actual lender that foreclosed on the house. Then this time around, I used credit cards, but I also used a variety of other ways since then. So obviously, you're not asking that question if you got the money in the bank. If you got that money in the bank, then you're going to go to the bank and you're going to write out a check or you're going to grab it out of your savings, right? Not a lot of people have that. Well, I know a lot of people I know don't have that. So Drew's asking a question because he's having a a problem finding out where to get it from. So, how about a HELOC? I don't know what the value is of someone's house versus what they owe on it, but any money that's in between there, you can get money out on a HELOC. Home equity line of credit. That's what I'm recommending. Not a fixed second mortgage or anything. Get a line of credit so you only pay on it depending on the outstanding balance. And the terms are usually really favorable. That's a great way to get into this. If you don't have that, maybe you have a 401k or a retirement or a pension. Now, these I'm not familiar with because I've used home equity lines, I've used credit card advances, and I've used other people's money as well as the bank. This, not so much. You know why? Because I must have had over 100 jobs, like I said before, and I've never had a pension or a 401k or any kind of a retirement plan. Hence, my enthusiasm for this real estate. So, if you do have a 401k or a retirement or a pension plan, I've heard, I don't know, but I heard that you could borrow against it. That would be another great way to get started. Credit card advances, I'm not recommending it for everyone. However, if you find that good of a deal and you have access to credit card advances, there you go. I put down other people. Obviously, we're talking about friends, family, relatives, people like that, but... Sometimes, the seller could be another source of funds. Now, I know I'm going over all this and people are saying, well, I don't really have good credit or I don't do this, I don't do this. I don't know your exact situation, but there's a variety of different ways. I'm going somewhere with that. Don't go anywhere. Break it down first. This way you don't have that whole, what do they say? How do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? I didn't make that up. So break it down. Let's say you're looking at a $200,000 house. $200,000, that sounds, sounds like a lot of money. Where am I going to come up with $200,000? Hold on, but wait, let's break it down. Let's take a down payment, the closing costs, the rehab, and the carrying costs into consideration, and it's going to be a lot less than $200,000. Well, that's a little bit more manageable, right? If, I, if you're going to take anything away from this video, take this away. Start now. So, if you don't have the means to get any of these, like if, if you don't have credit cards that you can take advances out on, you don't have a bank account that you can take money out of, you can at least start now getting yourself in a position to be able to. Um, get better credit. Start applying for more credit cards if your credit's already good. If your house is in decent shape and, and maybe you want to go out and get an appraisal on the house to see what it's really worth right now to see about a HELOC. Start fishing around for other people. The more people that know that you're interested in real estate are going to come to you and maybe they're not going to give you any money, but they might show you a deal, which is going to lead me into Drew's third question. So here's Drew's third question. How do you find a property, the right one, to flip? So when you asked me that question, I went back and I looked at some emails. I was like, it's a great question. I mean, I could say, you know, just go out there and start looking at Zillow and driving through your neighborhood and stuff, and that is some sound advice. However, I look back at some emails. I was looking at houses for like four or five years before I finally found a house. It's not because there wasn't any houses out there. It was because I had analysis paralysis. We went over that in a video. Also, I was not in a position to be able to. All these questions that you're asking are, are great questions. I didn't have any funds, my credit was only mediocre, and I didn't have access to, uh, to, to the loans that I have access to today. 
But here's the key. The key is, I was going out there. I was enjoying it. I was going through the neighborhoods. I was looking at Zillow. I was looking at classified ads. I was looking at Craigslist. So, to answer that question, get out there and start doing it. That's the hardest part of this. I know you're going to watch some other videos and they're going to say, find the property and the financing will find yourself, well, find, you'll find the financing like naturally. But man, that, it's not necessarily the case. However, along those same lines, you go out there and you start looking at properties. You're not going to be able to stop. You're going to get that real estate itch. And then you're going to come back to me and you say, hey, Harry, I found this deal. My brother-in-law's uncle's aunt is selling it because she's got to move to Florida and she needs to get out three weeks. And I'm going to say, hey, Drew, let's partner up on this. So until next time.